Well, certainly it's been an interesting first five months and uh, lots of activity going on. Um, I've had a chance to learn the ropes of Parliament, um, speaking in the House, asking questions. I made the top 10 list for Maclean's for uh, frequency of being up speaking in the House, so that was good. And uh, then committee work. So I'm the Chair for Status of Women, and we have decided to work on eliminating violence against women in Canada. So it's an initiative that the Minister of Status of Women will also be working on, but she's not covering all of it. So there's some steady work to be done um, in areas of cyberbullying, uh, hypersexualization of women, um, some uh, campus issues, uh, the justice system and how women are treated. So a number of issues that we'll be looking at over the next uh, few months. And then I was also assigned to the Pay Equity Committee. So the Pay Equity Committee is a special committee uh, that was a result of an NDP motion that came forward. And so we'll be looking at what we can do um, to follow up on recommendations from reports even back from 2004 um, in how to address the wage gap that still exists between men and women. So those two things, then the science critic portfolio has been a bit quiet um, up to the budget. Minister Duncan and I worked collaboratively to figure out what we wanted to see for science in Canada and so uh, the budget has come out and I would say it does reflect what we said we wanted to do. Well, uh, top of mind has been jobs for Sarnia Lambton. So in that light, uh, the oversized load corridor was something that I had talked about through the campaign and had been meeting with the Minister of Infrastructure because uh, this government has talked a lot about the infrastructure money that they're going to bring. And uh, their response to our presentation was that they thought they would create um, a specific trade corridor fund in the infrastructure portfolio. Now, we didn't see that in the budget. So I followed up with the minister to say, you know, where is that money that we talked about for Sarnia Lambton? So uh, they have put us back to the province to go through um, the Small Communities Fund, which existed previously. And so we were kind of back to square one on that one. So that was disappointing. But um, that said, we did receive $10.8 million support for the Comet Biorefinery which will create some jobs here. And there will be a couple of other announcements coming in the next several months. Um, similar clean tech bio type support for Sarnia Lambton that will be creating jobs. I think the other concern from the campaign was uh, with respect to our aging demographic. And so in that light, I have set up a forum for the end of April where we'll be bringing in um, the Lynn, Blue Water Health, folks that are into long-term care, the VON, all these various stakeholders, people that um, support uh, seniors' homes, to take a look at what's gonna happen over the next five to 10 years and identify, do we have the services we need or where are the gaps? Because if government money is available, then uh, for infrastructure or, or social housing is one of the, the things that the government has said they wanna support, then we should identify those things now and bring them forward. There's $12 million that uh, we would be looking for, and that would include the repairs that are needed at the dock, the staging area to bring efficiency, and all of the repairs, uh, burying cables, installing uh, retractable lights, um, and broadening the corners on the, on the load corridor province, so which is disappointing because I know that I was not the only one lobbying uh, for this. I know that Unifor was there bringing a similar message. But uh, that said, we will continue to press on. The engineering study, the detailed engineering study, will be complete at the end of April. And the business case that is needed in order to go through this provincial route costs about, uh, about $200,000. And so most of that money um, was raised. They had requested 60000 from the province to complete that study. So that will take another couple of months. So certainly it'll be fall before we would be in a position to even apply for the, the money that uh, the province would have. And then the feds would match if the province approved. Um, will be done and the business case study will show how, you know, what's the economic benefit, how many jobs will be created. And uh, you know, it's like the business case to go forward. Mm -hmm. And then we'd be asking for uh, as much of the 12 million as we could find. Typically that fund is a one third, one third, one third formula. So the municipality would have to come with some money and then the province and then the feds. I'm very concerned about the things that have come out in this budget. This is going to make things very difficult for us in Sarnia-Lambton. The small business tax reduction that was promised was not delivered on. 
Um, in addition to that, the federal government is talking about putting carbon pricing in on top of the cap and trade that Ontario is bringing in. And so if you're a small business owner, this is going to make the business climate very difficult. And for us in oil and gas, this is going to be very bad. Um, I mean, obviously the Shell refinery and the Imperial oil refinery um, that are not invested in renewables like Suncor is, they're going to see that oil's a, a terrible price and carbon taxes on top of it start to make this environment not a competitive landscape for them. So I'm concerned about that. I know that uh, CF Industries, who basically takes methane and turns it into carbon dioxide and water, they have already um, done huge efforts to reduce their carbon footprint, but now they're going to be asked to do it again. And then the Liberal government federally is bringing in uh, pricing for methane. So that will hit them very hard. So I think that these will be difficult times for small businesses and large businesses in Sarnia Lambton and uh, uh, for taxpayers as well. I say that the um, guaranteed income supplement that uh, was increased for seniors by 10%. So for those that are on a fixed income, I saw a lot of those folks when I was campaigning, um, any relief is good even if it's $18 a week. The um, improvement to veterans benefits was Definitely welcome. We, th we need to do more, I think, still, but uh, any ste step in the right direction there is a good one. 